Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I did a cool intro and outro for a music video. Okay, so this is for Arit's music video, and if you don't know who Arit is, Arit is my business partner and best friend. She is also a singer. And so we are reviving her YouTube channel and releasing some music videos that are not on there currently. And so I'm adding embellishments onto the video to make them look better and more appealing and to do like a call to action, which I'll show you at the end. So originally the video starts like Let's just show how it starts and then how it ends originally and then I'll show you what I added to it and how I made it. So first it starts off like this. Just how, you know, it's a live performance video. Live performance music video. And that's her. The song is called Cleopatra and that's kind of how it starts. Right? Just, okay, you know, there's a fade in and then it starts. Okay, so I've had to pull up the video because it was like glitching out a bit, but that's okay. So this is how it ends originally. So it just goes black and then that's kind of the end of the video. Like that's how it begins and then how that's how it ends. Now it's still cool and it's still a good live video but we can make it even better by adding in a customized intro and outro. So this is what I added before the video and then I'll show you what I added after. So this is what I added before. As you can see, it's totally customized to the whole song and theme of things. The song is called Cleopatra, so I have a Egyptian type font. I thought it would be cool to put Egyptian hieroglyphic type stuff at the top and bottom. It doesn't actually say anything in hieroglyphics, but I did find Egyptian type icons and images to put at the top and bottom. I thought it would be a cool like slight border to frame it. And then, you know, I put live performance and then it goes into the actual video of the actual performance. So that's the intro. Now, the outro part, we wanted to do a call to action because we were wanting people to go and follow Arit on Spotify and listen to her uh, music and stream the song Cleopatra. So that's the, the call to action that we want at the end of the video. So again, I reused the top and bottom hieroglyphics part, but the text now says stream on Spotify and then I'll play the ending here. So I'll just play it now. Okay, so you can see I did use the Cleopatra uh, song name and font again, but I moved it up. And then I have this vibrant green Spotify logo that bounces from the top down to the middle area and it's it's bouncing because I want to call attention to the Spotify and for people to go to their Spotify if they have um, an account uh, and on their phone on an app and go stream Cleopatra. So that's what we're trying to get is some followers for a read and some streams. So that is the outro that I created for her on this video. Now, as you can see, adding these both things, like it's definitely going to add the video. It definitely makes it a lot more robust. It's adding to it. It's, it's making it more beneficial because now we're asking for a Spotify stream and follow. Now, let me show you how I made this because even though it's like five seconds over there and 10 seconds at the end, it did take me some time to make this from scratch. So first is let's, talk about the most appealing part here, which is the hieroglyphics. So I made that from a website called Flat Icon. So let's head over to Flat Icon. All right, so we're here on Flat Icon and then you wanna scroll down until you see 
the patterns generator. So this is the thing that I use and I love it because it makes things so much easier rather than downloading each individual little small icon and then placing it in Camtasia. I already place it here and then I download it from here. So I'm going to click try it now. And then you want to type in, for me in this case, it was like Egyptian stuff. So I typed in Egypt and then I click search. I think if I type in Egyptian, I might get more stuff. Okay. And which one? I think it was this one that I used. Yeah, these look familiar. Okay, so th these ones are the ones that I used. And as you can see, I put them on a tan kind of colored background because that's Arit's brand and theme from her website is like black, gold, tan, that kind of color. So when I was on the flat icon background pattern generator, I basically chose each one and aligned it. So you can see here this, I, I went bird, scarab thing, face, 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 eye, cross thingy, pharaoh thing, snake, and then it repeats itself, right? There's a space and then it repeats itself. So all I did here is I went bird, right? And then I went to the top and I aligned to them. And it's really easy to use this little software here. And I just made it a little bit smaller. And then I made it white. So I'm going to have to change the background. So first I'm going to change the background to black just as an example and then I'm going to go back here and click on the icon and change it to white so you can see it and then the next was I'll just show you an example I won't do the whole thing this one but I think it shows up as black so I might have to just do this for now so I can see them and then I'll place it directly next and I chose each one specifically because I wanted them to look good so I I did it according to like this this scarab piece bird uh, bug here has wings so I chose this one which has an angle and then this one has angles as well so it kind of go underneath the wings so I, I did place these specifically and I just chose all the ones I want. You can do this for whatever theme you want and make a neat design. So now I'm going to change this to white and move it a bit. Let's just do one more. So the next one was the this one right here. So I'll change the color to white. Then I'll move it over here, make it smaller. Okay, let's say something like that. And then let's say I'm ready to download it. You want to head over. You, you can also change your background. You can even change it to clear. And if you have the the color number, you can get your specific and, and put it in here. And so that, that's how I got this color is I added in the specific color number for it. And you can even make it transparent if you want or leave it as is. Then you head over to download and you download the pattern and you can change the dimensions and the tile size of the pixels. You can make this larger or smaller and you can just play around with it. So then when you've got your sizes accordingly, you click download pattern and then you have something like this. So this is what I got. This right here is the pattern that I got and then I placed it on the board here and let's just duplicate one of them to show you. Actually, no, let's just grab this one. So I placed it on here like this and then I cropped it because I only wanted the top part and then I enlarged it something like this 
Maybe a little bigger. I'm going to just adjust it here. Just ballparking it here. Now this, I will not lie, this took me a bit because, you know, the... I had the idea for it, but you still have to play around and create it. So this wasn't like my regular edit where it took me like less than 15 minutes. I spent like maybe 90 minutes figuring all this out and playing around with things. But as you can see, end result is very cool. So there's, that's how I created it. So I just enlarged it and I got two rows of the pattern and then I duplicated it and then I put it on top and bottom with a black background. So I'm going to delete that. Then I told you that I downloaded a specific Egyptian style font. So all I did was go to Google, type in free Egyptian fonts, found one that looked really good with the word Cleopatra. I specifically type in the word so that I see what the font looks like and I, I wanted it to look a certain way and this one fit what I was looking for. So that's, that, as you can see, it looks really cool. I like the C and the L, especially in the A at the end. And then these things here, live performance, that's a simple uh, shape right there. And then the text that goes above it. And then I put that in for five seconds. And then I had the Cleopatra come in as a fade. So, the behavior is the fade in and then during is none and then I didn't have it fade out. I just kept it as fade in and then everything just directly just goes away from the screen and then it starts music video. I didn't want to do a fade again. Now at the end, everything is pretty much duplicated except for the Spotify logo and stream on Spotify. So this top part and this top part with the icons are duplicated. They're exact same as the beginning. This Cleopatra is the same size, everything. I just moved it up and then I downloaded a Spotify logo and I changed the text from live performance to stream on Spotify and then I had the Spotify thing, I specifically wanted that a bounce. Now when you get familiar with all of the behaviors based on your project, you'll know which one is the best for it. So I wanted it to, to bounce from the top to the bottom to its spot and then continue bouncing. I don't think like a fade would have been as effective because I, I really want people to pay attention to getting it in their head, you know, Spotify, go to Spotify, stream Cleopatra. You know, that's what I, that's what I want people to think about when they're watching this end part. Now, another thing that helps this end part, this outro is the song. So I actually got a instrumental version of Arit's song Cleopatra and I put it at the end so that it's not too distracting with the vocals because I don't want her singing when they just heard the song, so I wanted it to be a little bit different, so that's why you hear it like this. So this is like her instrumental show mix part, so it's not full of the full vocals. So that's why I left it like that. I put it on for 10 seconds so it's on the screen enough time for people to see it. And that's how I created this outro and intro for Arit's live performance music video. And we've since posted this on like Facebook and Instagram and stuff and like people are really digging it. They really loved it. And I really do feel that this intro and outro adds to the music video rather than just having it play from here. Yes, it's still cool, but I really do think that this whole extra going above and adding extra really makes a difference. So think about this when you guys are doing a project yourself, whether it be a music video or something else, if you can add a specific theme, intro or outro, 
something that you can create from scratch if you can use the icons or a different picture. You know, it's gonna take longer because you're making it from scratch, but the end result can be really worth it. All right, guys, well, that was it for this video. If you like these kinds of Camtasia tutorials, I would recommend you check out my Camtasia course. I've got an access link for two months free access to this nine plus hour course. I've got a ton of other videos and lectures and tutorials in there and they're all in one place. You can get them all together and you can accelerate your Camtasia learning. So you guys can get two months free access down in the description below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Back, back, back from the dead.